All right, so back in the day, people didn't really understand the implications that cybersecurity attacks had. Um, locking systems down really wasn't the first thought for system administrators. It was getting the system up and running, moving and grooving. So on today's episode of Book Club, where we deep dive into these like critical points and interesting facts on hacking and cybersecurity books, we're gonna talk about how this all changed. In Cliff Stoll's book, The Cuckoo's Egg, we essentially see a astronomer who's lost his grant money hurled into this Unix farm as a system administrator. And over his new like duties throughout his day, uh, his manager brought to his attention this 75 cent accounting error. Uh, basically, they're, they're charging for their like managed services and there's this weird uh, discrepancy. So while poking around in the system, Cliff happens to notice a username by the name of Hunter who's not supposed to be there. So what happens next is really cool. So Cliff goes through, he's a really smart guy, mind you. He has this like amalgamation of like a, a logic analyzers, we're talking electric dialers, um, like 50 printers at first, and then it brings it back down to like one or two of these like printers, as well as a beeper system. And what he's doing is he's tracking this intruder uh, through like, a, like an MDR, like a managed detection and response system. Anything that's going on at Berkeley Labs, Cliff is being notified while the whole time every single keystroke is being logged. Like this really exciting game of tennis, it was like a back and forth of like thwarting each other's efforts. Uh, so you know, the intruder would come back in and then Cliff would stop him. But then over time, Cliff stopped doing that and started going more into like a route of like what's going on because his, his method was very unorthodox, something they'd really seen. It, the, the individual wasn't really going after like galactic structures of the cosmos or any Anything that was like actually what the folks at Berkeley were, were working on, right? Um, the, the intruder was more interested in this like pivoting through the network and then eventually leading into like adjacent agencies, with one of them being the army via the Milnet. Bruh. So this unlikely man of science is like hot on this dude's tail, right? Uh, this this Jaeger hunter uh, username, this, this intruder. Uh, Cliff is on their tail. He's, he's like heavily deep in this like spy chase with these three letter agencies, the NSA, the FBI, you know, the DOD even. Um, the, the intruder is using things like, you know, holes and exploits of software as well as, you know, human laziness. Uh, it gets to a point though where, where Cliff is not only fighting the efforts of the intruder, but also like this heavy burden of bureaucracy where anytime like he needs a phone trace, he needs a warrant. You know, anytime he wants to talk to any of these like big three letter agencies, He's met with opposition because the problem isn't big enough yet. You know, like, hey, if it's in the millions of dollars of loss or like, you know, uh, classified information, then it's a problem. But Cliff saw where this was going and he didn't want it to get to that point. You know, it was already on the mill net. It was already, you know, crossing, you know, nation lines, you know, and, and without spoiling every single detail of the book, like it gets really hot and heavy. So some major takeaways from Cliff Stoll's book was that he was kind of on the forefront of this forensic analysis uh, threat hunting that we know today to where he was using things like honey pots. He had created like fake classified information and uh, kept the intruder busy while he was able to trace, you know, the telephone line. He used the exploits as like the GNU EMAC and was able to reverse engineer that and see how they were gaining their foothold and he was passing that along to the other agencies, like the ones that were affected who had the intruder broke into. Um, is using that, like, you know, thwarting out, you know, future attacks by, by annotating their TTPs, you know, like how they were actually using their tactics to get in there, you know, you know how they proceeded. Uh, so then there was also this uh, lack of like vulnerability reporting amongst the other agencies where it was like, hey, you know, like we're seeing these problems and it could affect you as well. There was none of that back in the day. Uh, so there was, you know, this weird division of the NSA, the FBI, the, you know, the army, no one talked to each other. So later on in the book, he actually is brought on as an advisor to talk to like the DOD, these like military, you know, high ranking officers and a bunch of like no name entities. It, it, it was interesting that like an astrophysicist brought those people together. <laughs> And then also at the very beginning of the video, I had mentioned this weird like 
you know, amalgamation of these different appliances. He basically created like the modern day sim where like you had all these different appliances that were talking to each other and then like married together, it's this one pane of glass where he's saying, hey, you know, here all the stuff's going on. I have everything annotated in my journal. Everything is all right here. We're able to not only see where this person is, you know, on the other side of the planet, but we can coordinate it enough to where they're put in handcuffs. You know, he was basically the godfather of incident response. And I can say that because around that same time, DARPA put together the CERT. <laughs> All right, so if you enjoy learning about cybersecurity in its early stages of life, you may also enjoy this video right here where the 80s hacker group brought the whole thing mainstream. Thank you very much and have a good one.